welcome to the second part of this lecture on ssb we will today study hilbert transform but before hilbert transform i would like to introduce the fourier transform of unit step function fourier transform of unit step function so <clears throat> most of you uh, i hope you know from control system and uh, you had a laplace transform the definition of unit step function it is one when t is greater than equal to zero it is zero for t less than zero sorry less than. so something like this okay now what one mis uh, some what mistake one makes is so some people may write for your transform of u of t is minus infinity to infinity u of t e to the power minus j omega t dt and which is 0 to infinity u of t is 1 so e to the power minus j omega t dt and then you may write 1 over j omega right because here is e to the power minus j omega t from 0 to infinity <coughs> sorry <coughs> and then you may make the mistake <coughs> that it is e to the power 0 minus 1 but this is wrong one re one re one way to see that why it is wrong is because you can basically you can write it in this way also If you write uh, this has cos omega t minus j sin omega t, then this becomes cos omega t minus j sin omega t. Now it becomes quite clear. Both of these integrals are not defined. They are oscillating, right? Cos is oscillating between minus one and one. Sine is oscillating between minus one and one. And then you are integrating. They are not defined. The other <coughs> reason is there is a now if you look at the plot, there is a jump discontinuity here. Okay, at t is equal to zero, is called jump discontinuity. And at this point, actually, this is the main point of fault. This, at this point the integral does not exist okay integral does not exist at t is equal to 0 but we are integrating from 0 to infinity so this is the problematic point now <clears throat> how to take care of um, this jump discontinuity so for that we will represent unit step function by some other function suppose let's define a function g a of t as e to the power minus a t for t greater than equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0 <laughs> now if you plot this function i will plot it here so at t equal to 0 its value is 1 sorry and it decays and it is 0 for t less than 0 okay so this is g a of t and uh, what happens with a so as a increases now i will plot with red color uh, so this is a larger a so when a increases it decays fast okay now with blue color i will plot with smaller a when a is having less value it decays slow okay <clears throat> and we can compute its fourier transform that is well defined fourier transform of g a of t we call it g a of omega so 
you have already done it you can compute it using this 0 to infinity e to the power minus a t e to the power minus j omega t dt which is 1 over sorry a plus j omega <laughs> okay this is the Fourier transform of uh, e to the power minus a t now we will break into it two part so these two parts will be i will write it as one so a minus j omega divided by a square plus omega square okay so this will be a divided by a square plus omega square minus j omega divided by a square plus uh, omega square now we will we observe one thing that as a tends to zero you go back to this graph so as a tends to zero so this is a decreasing so as a tends to zero it becomes flat and flat and finally for a a tends to zero this is the case a tends to zero it becomes a unit step function okay so that means as a tends to zero g a of t tends to unit step function so its Fourier transform will tend to the Fourier transform unit step function so now let's see the first part a divided by a square plus omega square <laughs> now as a tends to 0 and at omega equal to 0 this function it behaves like an impulse function see how as a goes to 0 and omega is equal to 0 it becomes 0 okay so let's see it in this way let's put first omega equal to 0 okay then it becomes a by a square which is 1 by a now as a tends to 0 1 by a tends to infinity okay and for omega not equal to 0 <coughs> as a tends to 0 a by a square plus omega square tends to 0 this is same as delta omega because delta omega is infinity for omega equal to 0 and it is 0 for omega not equal to 0 but we need one more important property to be satisfied delta omega integral from minus infinity to infinity is 1 for that we need minus infinity to infinity a divided by a square plus omega square d omega this of to be 1 okay but what we observe is what we observe is uh, this integral a divided by a square plus omega square d omega which is uh, a times d omega by a square plus omega square we know integral of this part is 1 over a tan inverse of omega by a which is tan inverse of omega by a okay now for minus infinity to infinity tan inverse of omega by a d omega which will be 2 times 0 to infinity because oh, oh sorry I had to take integral of this part so up to this part is okay now integral from minus infinity to infinity a d omega divided by a square plus omega square since this function is even function in omega so it will become 2 a times 0 to infinity d omega by a square plus omega square then this will become 2 times tan inverse of 
omega by a from 0 to infinity and this will become 2 tan inverse of infinity minus 0 which is equal to 2 pi by 2 which is pi <coughs> so this integral becomes pi okay so it means its area is pi so actually we can say that 1 over pi integral a d omega divided by a square plus omega square from minus infinity plus infinity this is 1 so actually this behaves like a this function that is 1 over pi a divided by a square plus omega square this behaves like delta omega as a goes to 0 okay that is very important <coughs> so it means a divided by a square plus omega square tends to pi delta omega as a goes to 0 okay so note this carefully you, you may not find this easily in books okay so now we have uh, so we had broken broken this in two parts so first part as a goes to 0 tends to this tends to pi delta omega second part is very simple second part is minus j omega divided by a square plus omega square this tends to minus j omega by omega square as a goes to 0 which is 1 over j omega this is the part which you usually expect so hence i will write it here so you have g a of t which is e to the power minus a t okay and g a of omega which is the Fourier transform of g a of t which is equal to a divided by a square plus omega square minus j omega by a square plus omega square okay so as a tends to 0 okay g a of omega tends to pi delta omega plus 1 over j omega but we know that g a of t tends to u of t as a tends to 0 so g a of omega actually tends to Fourier transform of u of t as a tends to 0 so Fourier transform of u of t is equal to pi delta omega plus 1 over j omega this is the Fourier transform this may look weird for some of you you may think it was very simple and here is this pi delta omega which accounts for the jump it accounts for the jump at t is equal to 0 okay so i will uh, actually end this lecture here so that i can now use this result to prove the hilbert transform in next short video